The world in 2050 is going to be hot, crowded, and hungry. Will we have enough beef and pork to feed a crowded planet? Or will we simply run out of pasture land and concentrated animal feedlots, or even the grain, to feed them? Many have begun turning to our world's oceans. But even with international supervision of global fisheries, we've still managed to overfish dozens of species nearly to the point of extinction. So how will we feed the world in 2050? In many parts of the world, fishermen are becoming farmers. They raise Atlantic salmon on a variety of fish farms, which include open pens. Open pens are circular nets placed in the ocean. These allow Atlantic salmon to be raised in the Pacific. Many environmentalists and even other fishermen haven't been happy with the results. Because these pens are open, they can easily pollute surrounding waters with high concentrations of fish waste, excess nutrients, and drugs like antibiotics and pesticides, which are used to keep these fish healthy. Farm fish also transfer disease, parasites, and pathogens, and can escape to breed with wild salmon. Most of their feed comes from fish like the anchoveta, a variety of anchovy caught off the coast of Peru. The anchoveta species is one of the most overfished in the world, which is a problem because without anchovetas, an entire undersea food chain simply breaks. Anchovetas are a key food source for dozens of fish farms operating thousands of miles away in British Columbia, Canada. In a place called Alert Bay, just off Vancouver Island, the Numgees First Nations tribe have seen their native fishing grounds threatened by the arrival of these open pens. They're everywhere up here, including these people's native fishing grounds, which has created a real challenge to a Numgees fishing culture that has depended on wild salmon for a thousand years. But then, these people came up with a fascinating idea. They too would build a fish farm for salmon, but instead of doing it on their sacred waters, they went on land, in the middle of a forest, to raise fish in a box. Their aquaculture is a closed system, with Atlantic salmon raised in water that is continuously purified and reused. For 12 months, schools of salmon are raised in a series of large above-ground grow-out tanks. Their water is continuously cleaned, first by removing solids, then by passing the water through biofilters to extract remaining waste particles and ammonia. After oxygen is added, this purified water is returned to the tank, and the cycle repeats. It's a principle called recirculating aquaculture. The result? No more pollution of surrounding waters, and no more transference of disease to other fish, because there's no more open pen. It all makes for cleaner oceans, and their preservation of native species. Instead of feeding anchovetas to their fish, some fish farms in the region are exploring more sustainable sources that may one day come from an unlikely place, one that transforms food waste taken from supermarkets and nearby farms into feedstock. Food for black soldier flies. The larvae of these flies much like the anchoveta, are rich in omega-3s and 6s, and when dried, become an ideal food source for farm salmon. After only 12 months, these salmon are finally ready for harvest. Because they're raised without hormones, antibiotics, or pesticides, they earn the prestigious green ranking, a certification reserved for seafood caught or farmed 
in environmentally friendly ways that cause little harm to habitats or other wildlife. It's just one step in preserving our wild fish stocks while working to meet the planet's food demands for future generations. While also preserving Numgi's traditions, traditions born out of respect for their people, their culture, their land, their water, and their salmon. To learn more about terms like recirculating aquaculture, feed ratios, nutrient renewal, black soldier flies, and green rank salmon, visit lexiconofwater.com for a collection of people and words that can change the world.